I guess something that I wish I had gone into with a little bit different of a mindset was realizing that there's no perfect project that I'm seeking for. Um, with the Watson, it's there's so much freedom, but with all the freedom comes can come a lot of doubt. And so oftentimes, especially at the beginning, I felt I found myself doubting where I was, what I was doing, because everything's up to you. You're deciding where you're going, what you're doing, when it's time to leave. It, it there it can be really overwhelming. Um, but by by the end of it, I realized that everything is an important part of the process. Even the countries that you know don't yield as much much as you would like, or the places that seem like it's not going well. I still learned a ton, and it was an important part of the process. Depending on the program you're in, um, you have to. It, you're not sure, you know, who's going to be in your cohort, um, how many people, who they are going to be, and you know. So mine was like for the Hindi in order to do, there was like a lot of people, but many of the people were in the Hindi program. So I ended up with a really small group of people, about six. Um, and so the, these were the people who you're, you're kind of on like this spaceship, you know, because you're, you're not connecting to everyone else quite as much as you are to, um, to your people. Um, and so this was kind of an interesting experience of being with a really small um, cohort. Um, but so I think knowing that in advance is good. Uh, oftentimes, I think with government work um, and um, really being inside uh, a federal agency, sometimes when you're outside of that DC bubble, it's quite hard to get um, that exposure and, and the connections that you need. Um, and obviously, Carlton does a wonderful job by, you know, students are always looking for internship opportunities in DC and things like this. But this was really an opportunity for me to. Um, kind of get a foot in the door um, in a way that I think if I hadn't had the Boren scholarship um, on my resume, it, it would have been a bit difficult for me to have that level of exposure um, just so early on. So I'm extremely grateful for it. And I really, really encourage anyone who um, is slightly interested in uh, national security issues or defense issues for the US, um, to apply to this scholarship um, because it's an amazing time and it really teaches you a lot about, I mean, yourself, but also um, the United States. <laughs> but I think what would have been helpful for me is I assumed all the people on the program would have, studying at Queen's University Belfast for these four weeks, would have come through this Fulbright program. And that wasn't the case. So there are a number of us from this program, but then there are also people who, um, just join the program through other scholarships or fellowships, or just paid the tuition fee to be there. So there was was a fairly international group, which was really nice, but not everyone was through this program, which would have been nice to know. It, I wish that I also had known more about the school and reached out to more people at the school, but I, I think, especially when I first applied, I was sold just by the website. I was so excited about the program that it wasn't, the the biggest concern on my mind. I would recommend that people reach out to current students at the school, ideally in their uh, the same degree program that the whatever person who might be looking at a Fulbright scholarship, whatever program they want to go into. So that's my my biggest piece of advice: connecting with students wherever you plan to go for whatever you plan to do.